after showing significant improvement in her second full season of Indie NXT competition, it's Jamie Chadwick who has earned the opportunity to test an IndyCar with Andretti Global. Now, Chadwick will make her IndyCar test debut on September 30th at Barber Motorsports Park. She'll become the first female Indy NXT race winner to receive an IndyCar test since Pippa Man back in 2011. I want to specify that because many people have been getting that wrong over the past 24 hours. It's the first female Indy NXT race winner to receive an IndyCar test since Pippa Man in 2011. Repeating that because Sky got in trouble earlier. Now, in her rookie season, Chadwick picked up a uh, five top ten finishes and really stepped up her game this year with four races to go in the 2024 season. She currently sits fifth in the points in what has been a huge year that saw her win from pole at Road America. The build up to the Canadian Grand Prix. All of us on the commentary team and here at Good Network as well were cheering like crazy as she was able to do that. Chadwick made history on that special day in Earl Car Late as well by becoming the first woman to win an Indy NXT race on a road or street course and only the third woman to win a race in the series history. She said she's excited to test an IndyCar for the first time as making it to the NTT IndyCar series remains her goal and she'll try to learn as much as possible on the test day. Michael Andretti praised Chadwick for growing as a driver in the last year, saying the work she put in over the off-season has been obvious and he's pleased with the progress she's made, the graphic courtesy there of Andretti Global. Congrats to Jamie Chadwick on the IndyCar test. Can't wait to see how she does. I agree with Adam there as well. I think we all do because how massive an opportunity for Jamie Chadwick is this, Kobe? This is an enormous opportunity for Jamie Chadwick. I have to say, well done. She totally earned it. I echo everything that Michael and Andretti has said. I know usually in, in a driver's first season of any next competition, it's usually a struggle. You know, this is this any next car is way different compared to any open wheel car Jamie Chadwick has driven way different compared to the W Series car that that she was in. And and I think the one of the biggest differences is, you know, is the physicality of this Indy Next car. I, when a lot of drivers first come in a series, their rookie year, their 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 arms, their neck, you know, they're complaining about pain in that because you really have to work on your upper body strength and make sure you're ready to to muscle around this race car because you really you really have to get up on the wheel and 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 sling this thing, you know, around around in the corners. And and Jamie Jamie Chatwell, I think she struggled a little bit with the physicality of this car. Last year, but like Michael and Jerry said, she went to work over the off season. She worked on she worked on her condition. She worked on gaining a lot more upper body strength, and she and she learned a lot from the race in last season. And we and the proof is in the pudding. That was a spectacular run at Road Road, Road America. A great great victory there. We've and in the oval in the oval race we saw at Iowa. You know, saw saw a lot of improvement from from her as well. Looking forward to seeing what she's going to do at the remaining oval races in the twenty twenty four. In the, in the next season and if you know continue to improve on those i think you know she'll, she'll she'll be good to go for the future but in regards to jamie chadwick's future in general i think she, she would be better off doing one more season of indy next yeah, yeah first first year you know basically learn the series learn the car the style of racing how the you know how it goes second year you know big jump one got, got the pole got the got the race win you know, sitting in the top five in points, and and she, and there's a possibility. You know, she could she could hold it down and in the year. Top five in points would be here for her. And year three, potentially be a championship contender. You know, try to get the scholarship money and graduate to the IndyCar Series in 2026. But I know some people are wondering what is Jamie Chatwood's future is going to hold because there was this Motorsport.com article about it was out about maybe a month, month and a half ago. You know, in, in this exclusive saying that Motorsport.com was here and that Jamie Chatwood could potentially move up to the Entity IndyCar Series as early as 2025. And I know when some people saw that, they were wondering, is this potentially too soon for Jamie Chatwood? They said we don't need to rush her, that getting another year of Indy Next would be very, very good for her because if you rush up a young driver too soon, you could potentially, you know, lead them to failure. But all in all, I think it's really great that Jamie Chatwood got this IndyCar test extremely well-deserved, and I think she's going to knock this right out of the ballpark and, Looking forward to hearing how she does come at the end of September. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, Kobe. It's uh, tremendous. Well done, her. And, you know, Road America win was was fabulous. And she was in the fight at Detroit the week before for a podium and got kind of sc scurried out of it late in the race. 
I think she ended up fifth from memory. I should know. I only watched that race yesterday. Um, but um, yeah, it's just great to see that this has worked because I think like there was a lot of people, what, 18 months ago or whenever it was that it got announced that she was going across after you know, she dominated W Series in in that what is now the F1 Academy when it was W Series. She was the dominant figure in that. And you, you feel like, well, was she was she really, really good compared to the rest of the field? Or we need to go we need to see her up against some stiffer competition. And last year through the championship year, you know, there was some spells of of um speed and stuff but now she's going back to the tracks that she's got knowledge of um and she's yeah as you said smashing it out of the park and to get it that victory at road america was was really really good so we'll see i think i agree with you kobe i think if she goes straight up next year it's a little bit too soon if she can come back to indy next which you know i think is probably the most likely option and she's got the backing of andretti and she does well in the if she does well in the test they can't find her a seat then they put her in one of her put her in one of their cars in indy next again next year then she's going to be she's got to be considered one of the championship favorites potentially uh down there next year with two years of experience under her belt one win maybe more before the end of the season um and then go go for indy car in in 26 when you know more of the uh indy car silly season this year has been absolutely completely bonkers so if something opens up for her in andretti or elsewhere with some more experience and stuff then we'll, we'll see uh we'll see what happens kobe you've got more yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah i just wanted to add one more point uh on why i think it would be best for jamie chagwit to wait until 2026 to move up to the indycar series because i'm because looking at you know the rides that are available for next year and the extremely competitive driver market is like where would she go? I think Jamie Chatwood deserves to be, you know, in a competitive car, you know, where she has the best opportunity to succeed. And, like, say, no offense to teams like, say, Hunk, Hunko's Holland, Hollinger Racing or something like that, you know, especially the, the 78 team or, like, the 41 at A.J. Ford Racing or even, you know, the Del Coin cars, you know, which have really struggled, you know, quite a, quite a bit throughout the season. You wouldn't really want to see Jamie Chatwood go to a struggling team or anything like that where she's just going to struggle and have a hard time thing you need to surround jamie chat with 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 an experienced team that can provide a competitive car and give her the best opportunity to succeed and i think ideally it would be great for her to stay in the andretti global family but right now they currently have three drivers i think out of their three drivers right now colton herda kyle kirkwood i think they're untouchable but at 28 marcus erickson I think Marcus Erickson, you know, d- deserves, you know, one more one more year with Andretti to see if it's going to work. I know this season hasn't exactly gone to plan for Marcus Erickson. And and, I'm, and I know some people have already said maybe he's having some buyer's remorse and maybe should have, you know, accepted a return to Chip Ganassi racing. But although he did get the, you know, the deal that he was seeking with with Andretti, it just hasn't seemed to click so far. And and and, and really, sometimes you need to. Look at these situations. You need to take a step back and look at these situations. And while this year may not go well for Erickson, go into 2025, you know, and if it's still not working, then you can potentially move on from Erickson in that 28 and slide Jamie Chatwick into that car in in 2026, you know, when she may be more polished and ready for that move. Because we saw when Andretti had that fourth car, the number 29, you know, that's when the team, you know, took quite a dip in performance. And I think eliminating that fourth car really. Help that Andretti. I wouldn't want Andretti, you know, to roll out the fourth car again, you know, for a Jamie Chatwood, you know, then Andretti's running into the same problems that they've received. I think Jamie Chatwood just needs to find the right opportunity at IndyCar and and, and getting getting in the in the series with a back marker team is probably not gonna be the best move. Yeah, I agree. She doesn't they don't she doesn't want to just take a contract because it's been offered to her from a second half of the field team. And we know the profile is strong. For her this side of the pond as well as now growing obviously in america as she stays in the paddock you know that the andretti global group will get behind her and get some sponsorship for her if it's needed and there will be a big draw i don't want to make this comparison but i'm going to make it we don't want to see her do what danica did in the cup series and end up in a second half of the field team in a bit of an also ran kind of way and struggle and then end up filtering out the back door and never to be seen again because we know she's a British GT race winner as well in GT4. Now she's an Indy Next winner. She is very, very capable. 
and has got the talent. She just needs to be put in that right place. If it's going to be a, an Assi, an Andretti, a McLaren, or even a, goodness be, even a Team Penske, um, yeah. one of those top tier teams, you, you just want to see her go in there and have the support and do well. I agree with you 100%. And from uh, somebody who's commentated on her and seen her race, of course, when we covered W Series, um, she's absolutely fantastic. She was leagues ahead of everybody else as well. And I think uh, it's a shame we didn't get to see an F1 Academy, a championship, which is uh, it's, it's a little bit more up there, a little bit more, well, it's very much more professional uh, than what uh, W Series was as well. And I really like seeing her succeed in the touring car paddock. That's what one thing because I'm very close with the touring car paddock at the moment as well. I really there is a buzz around her when she was there a couple of years ago, and it's a similar buzz that you see now with Abby pulling in F1 Academy. Say, that's the next one, yeah, isn't it? yeah. So when Jamie was there and when she turns up every now and then to watch the races as well, there is the sort of the anticipation of everybody knows that she's the next upcoming thing. And when she was in the F4, the British F4, Jamie Chadwick. Um, she was fantastic. I was talking with uh, Richard John Neal, and he said it was always everyone was around Jamie, not over Jamie Carrick. And it was not Jamie, uh, Jamie, well, you know, the one can't remember the name now. Uh, the time had, it was always around um, Jamie Chadwick God. rather mm. than I know you know the one I'm on about as well, don't you? Yeah, Jamie Caroline, Jamie Caroline, that's him. Yeah, here we go. They were always around Chadwick, not Caroline. Um, yeah, so it's very hard there. So, and it's a similar thing you're seeing now with Abby Pulling as well, that she's the next one to come along. And it's fantastic. So I can't wait to see what she does. And Adam says, one more year in Indy NXT for Jamie Chadwick, then she'll be ready for IndyCar as well. If anything, next year, give her a 500 test out. That's what I would do next year. Give her the, yeah. big, give her the big one. Um, she's ready for it. 